Canon R8 is the most compact and affordable full frame camera from Canon. We had the awesome opportunity to dive with it in the Galapagos in California, so check out our full review. This is Nirpalm from the Underwater Photography Guide and Blue Water Photo. Now I just got back from the Galapagos with the Canon EOS R8. This is Canon's newest full frame mirrorless camera. Now what makes this camera so special is it's just $1,500 for the body for some amazing features and honestly I'm pretty stoked. I think this is my favorite full frame mirrorless camera system for any entry level underwater shooter. So let's just jump into the review. Now starting off, the build quality is awesome. Uh, now it is a little bit more plasticky than some of the higher end bodies, uh, but you know, to me that's fine. You're putting it in a housing anyway. Uh, but what's most important about it is it's very light. It's smaller than any of the other Canon full frame mirrorless cameras, which means it can actually fit in this Ikelite dry lock micro housing. Now normally you would need a dry lock housing. Uh, let's see, I've got a Nikon Z8 housing over here. So this is the dry lock housing versus the dry lock micro. So you're able to actually cut down a few pounds while you're traveling. And for me, that's a huge deal, especially because I still get the same full frame image quality and dynamic range as I normally would in a full frame camera. Now currently Ikelite is the only brand making an underwater housing for the Canon R8. I do hope other housing brands will make a housing because I think it's a great deal and it's a great option for any underwater shooter. Now taking a look at the housing real quick, uh, this is a prototype housing, so it's not going to be exactly the same as what you might see in production. There's a few new knobs that I was trying out that Ikelite's created, which I thought were pretty cool. But the layout of the buttons uh, and design of the camera is very similar to other Canon cameras. So if you're a Canon shooter, you won't need to know anything new. Uh, you can go right into it. Now my favorite button is the Q button right in the middle. It accesses your main menu where you can access all of your nice uh, underwater functions that I change often. It's not quite as customizable as it might be on the Canon R5, let's say, but it's uh, awesome for what it's got. Now, there's three things I really enjoyed about using the Ikelite system for the R8. The first is, as usual, the um, back button autofocus and trigger have a nice lever. So I really like using that because all you do is you hit that back button and then you hit the trigger to take the photo. I really like the TTL converter on the housing. All my photos were shot with dual Ikelite DS230 strobes as well as the TTL converter, um, which just made my exposures very accurate with anything that I was shooting. So that's a really nice feature on the housing. And then of course, the vacuum system and the clear back make it very easy to make sure that you're not getting any water in the system. So that's the Ikelite housing and that's a little bit about the build quality. But let's talk about what's really important about this camera, which is image quality. So the sensor on the camera is basically the same as the one on the Canon R6 Mark II. So it's a 24.2 megapixel sensor, which I think is a sweet spot for a full frame camera. Once you start adding pixels, you do get more resolution but you also get a little bit more noise. So in low light, this camera did an amazing job. I was able to get some awesome black sea bass photos in California uh, up to ISO 1600 because it was a really dark cloudy day as it has been this June. Now, because this camera is so small, there is no in-body image stabilization on the camera. Now, to me, that's fine because I do like the size of the camera. When I'm traveling, I'm able to actually cut down a couple pounds out of the system as a whole, maybe up, even up to seven pounds, I think. But if you shoot in low light conditions or in cold water, you will be missing that in-body image stabilization system. I was able to get down to shutter speeds about 1 40th of a second underwater and not have any motion blur from the camera, which is still really nice. And if you're a video shooter, you might consider the Canon R6 Mark II because it does have that in-body image stabilization system, unlike the R8. Now the autofocus system is the same great dual pixel autofocus that you always have on the Canon cameras, 
Uh, and what's amazing about it is for a $1,500 camera, you're getting the same autofocus system that we found in the R3, the R10, the R7. Uh, all of these cameras have the same system, and that means you're gonna have sticky autofocus. And on top of that, I was able to get fish eyes uh, to track um, with this camera, even with a wide angle lens. Now it didn't always happen, but it's certainly better than even the Canon R5, and I think that's a huge improvement with the Canon R8. When it comes to video specs, the Canon R8 is another awesome option for underwater video. If you're a new underwater video shooter, I actually might recommend the R8 over other full frame cameras just because the price point is so good and you want to start getting into underwater video, this is going to give you great quality uh, for a very low price. So the R8 can shoot 4K video up to 60 frames per second. That's usually the frame rate and res resolution I recommend underwater. So even though it doesn't have higher resolutions or higher frame rates, I really think that's all you need for most situations. Now, if you're really into post-production and you want to do some color editing in your footage, the R8 does have C-Log3 recording, which allows you to take more details from your highlights and more details from your shadow and uh, bring out those details and dynamic range in post-production. But like I said, the one downside for video shooters is it does not have an in-body image stabilization system. So you'll want to use stabilized lenses to try to get everything as steady as possible when you're shooting. Now let's talk about some of the downsides of the Canon R8. If you are a higher end shooter or you're thinking about um, going to a full frame mirrorless camera, but you're not sure if you want to do the R8 or not, uh, the reason the R8 was a little bit cheaper than other bodies is because it's actually missing the first curtain of the mechanical shutter. It still has a mechanical shutter, but if you take a photo, you can hear it kind of sounds a little bit heavy. Uh, it's, it's a little bit different than other cameras in the sense that you're only taking photos with a rear curtain. The first curtain is electronic. Now that doesn't really affect your images until you get to above 1 500th of a second for your shutter speed uh, where the bokeh starts to look a little different and then above 1 4,000th of a second uh, sometimes the exposures can be a little bit uneven. Now for an underwater shooter that's not a problem because you're limited by the sync speed of the flash which is 1 200th of a second in this case. So if you're an underwater shooter only you don't really need another camera it's not a downside. Now if you are a topside shooter, you do a lot of action photography or you do a lot of shooting in um, really heavy light environments, then you might want to consider a higher end camera that has a full mechanical shutter. Now that being said, many cameras are kind of moving towards electronic shutters anyway. Um, so a camera like the R3 or the Z9 uh, flagship cameras are not even going to have a mechanical shutter. But this was just one way to reduce uh, the cost in the camera itself. And also because of that, the R8 can only shoot six frames per second. Again, if you're an underwater shooter and you've got strobes, you're not gonna be limited by six frames per second. Your strobes are gonna have a hard time keeping up uh, with a camera that's shooting that fast. But if you're a top side photographer and you need that frame rate, you might wanna consider a higher end camera like the Canon R6 Mark II. So let's talk about who this camera is for. Overall, I think the camera is for most entry-level shooters. Um, these days, APS-C cameras are not as common, although Canon did come out with the R10 and the R7. But if you're considering the R7, in many cases, I would consider a little better image quality, a little less resolution, uh, and a little more dynamic range overall to be the best choice in the Canon R8. So if you're in that $1,500 price point, I would choose the Canon R8 over the R7, unless you want all the bells and whistles that the R7 has, or you're a macro shooter, and you wanna use that crop factor when you're taking your macro photos with the R7. Now, if you're a full frame shooter and you're thinking about upgrading, the R5 is still going to be a much better camera. It's got a better processor, it's got more resolution, it's got all the bells and whistles, 8K video, 4K video up to 120 frames per second. So the R5 is still gonna be the best option if you're a high-end full frame shooter. But if you're looking for the most economical, most affordable package with the best image quality, you'll wanna consider this DLM housing from Eichlight and the R8. 
Now, like I said, I do hope other housing manufacturers will consider making a housing for the R8, but so far it's just Eichlight and I really enjoyed shooting it. Now, when it comes to underwater lenses, the first thing I wanna talk about is the fact that these lenses are still large because they're full frame lenses, which makes it a little bit hard to change your lenses with this housing. What you need to do is you need to actually take the port off, then your lens off, then the body out of the housing in order to change things out. Now, you can change lenses in the housing specifically because there's a lens release button, so you don't have to take the body out. But in order to take the camera out entirely, you do have to take the lens off first. So when it comes to wide angle lenses, I was shooting the Canon 8 to 15 millimeter fisheye. I love this lens, it's super sharp. I think sharper than the, than the Takina, but it is a little wider than the Takina. Another lens that I really like shooting with this camera is the Canon 14 to 35 millimeter lens. Now that's a lens I shot pretty often in the Galapagos to get those farther subjects. Uh, but one thing to note is that between 14 and 16 millimeters, you will get some vignetting. So it's a good idea to zoom in a little bit with that lens uh, if you're going to use it. I would consider it more to be a 16 to 35 as is standard when it comes to rectilinear wide lenses. Now when it comes to macro lenses, I really enjoyed using the Canon RF 100mm lens. I think it's an awesome lens and combined with the autofocus on the R8, you're going to have one of the fastest macro autofocusing systems out there. Now the one downside of shooting the R8 versus a similar camera like the Canon R7 is the fact that you don't have that crop factor. So if you're a macro shooter, I might consider the R7 over the R8. But if you're a wide angle shooter, definitely the higher image quality, the better dynamic range is going to be a better option with the R8. Now between those three lenses, for the most part, you'll be completely covered when it comes to shooting underwater. So those are my favorite three, uh, but if you have any other lenses that you like, make sure you drop them in the comments below. So like I said, I'm going to keep this review pretty short. I love the camera. I think if you're an entry level shooter, it should be at the top of your list because for an affordable price point, you can get into full frame photography uh, with all the bells and whistles that Canon has to offer. They really didn't cut back when it comes to the features they put in the camera. So if you're interested in an underwater system, reach out to us at sales at bluewaterphotostore.com or if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I love seeing your guys' comments and I like getting back to you guys as well. Uh, now, with that, if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you guys out there diving.